Yo, what's up, y'all? This your boy T-Lo. Yo, what's Gucci? This your man Tweet. What up, y'all? DJ Kid Fresh. What's up? This your boy RL. And we're next. And you're rocking with the Rebirth every Monday at 7 p.m. But you know the hits. Rebirth Radio, baby. Every Monday, 7 p.m. Shane and Eli. All right, rocking that old school. Peace. Rebirth on Philly Jams 95.3 FM. I'm your host, Shay Marriott. Welcome back. Welcome <laughs> back. Welcome back. Welcome back. What's up, E? What it do, boo? <laughs> <laughs> it's your boy, Eli Isabel, a.k.a. The South. You got something to say. <laughs> Happy Monday. Happy Monday. It's so good to have you back. I haven't seen you in, what, three weeks? Yeah. Give yeah. or take? It's, yeah. You all right? I'm better. I'm better. I was out last week, of course. I was down. I was sick as well. But you know, God is good. I'm back, and I'm 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 excited about tonight's show. Stop shopping at Audi and eating them old <laughs> neck bones. Don't eat no pork from Audi. You leave it just just leave it alone. You need to stop. Show ass back over to uh, Wakeman's or somewhere. Get your life together. <laughs> Total Foods. Uh-huh. Whole Foods, whatever it's called. <laughs> Stand your, you know your body can't take that stuff. Mm-hmm. I done told you. That's why I was out? That's it. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's talk about why you were out. <laughs> well, I had my fourth child, and I was home uh, being a father. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I'm a dad okay. again. Congratulations, okay. Congratulations to me. Congratulations. Uh-huh. Nah, man. Um, <laughs> listen, I went through the most. And this is a routine thing, so I'm not going to act like it's like it wasn't heart surgery. But damn it, it hurt. Mm. The recovery hurt. Like, you ever been in so much pain that it makes you want to throw up? Yeah, I have. That's the pain I was in. Yeah. And granted, men are like little girls. No offense. Hey, men are like soft when it comes to being in pain. <laughs> I can admit that because, you know, we can have a little fever and we think uh-huh. we're about to die. So, but Yeah, y'all babies. This was real, though. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like in a bad way. I was like, Lord, is this, should I have done this mm-hmm. pain? Yeah. Like, I should have just kept my old hip and dealt with that pain. How long yeah. did, did it take for you to begin to experience some type of relief? Uh, about four days. Four days? But okay. two of those days, I was on oxycodone, so I don't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> I think I talked to you on one of those days. You might have. You might have. I, listen, they, I, was, I, was, I was out of it. I woke up one day, and then, then when the oxy wore off, I went and looked in the mirror. They had me dressed like I was, I was a special needs person. <laughs> I had on the striped shirts and plaid pants, and they had a little hat on me with a little propeller on the top. I was like, what the fuck is going on? I'm looking at myself you in the mirror. You need to quit. And I looked outside, there was a van out there waiting on me. I was like, I quit. No more oxys. They ain't going to do me like that. You're so silly. You are silly. But, well, yeah, it took a couple of days. Better. I'm back. Yeah. I'm still, you know, I'm, in, I'm, I'm still coming along, but mm-hmm. I thank you, Lord, that bad part is over yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So. well it's nice to be back um yes. we're back Amen. in the studio and we have so much stuff going on before we get to tonight's show and before we um announce our amazing guests mm-hmm. you guys yeah. know a couple weeks ago i announced that we are doing another rebirth live four man let me tell you i got proper and you know what i didn't even four. i'm not even put a, a putting a number behind this one although okay. this is our fourth one but because this one is going to be so different than the rest of them, we have live entertainment that's going to be there. We have vendors that's going to be there. We have food. And the other thing is we are going to be in a new venue. Woo-hoo. So Rebirth Live coming October 13th will be at Theater Inn in Wilmington, Delaware. Yes. So, guys, make sure you get your tickets. It's where conversation and entertainment come together. This is going to be a grown and sexy event. So, listen, girls' night out, 
men's night out, date night, everybody. It's for everyone. So come. Yes. We're going to do a couple's panel. We're going to do a Ooh, men's panel. Child. We're going to do a ladies panel. Child. We are just going to have a great time. So make sure you get your tickets October 13th at rebirthu.com. I think we got a little video coming up too. We're going to check out real quick. Rebirth Podcast is coming from behind the mic to a live audience. We're bringing conversation and entertainment together. Make sure you mark your calendar for October 13th. The event is happening right here at Theater Inn in Wilmington, Delaware. This event is for men and women, so we cannot wait for you to be a part of this. Yeah, man. We coming. We coming. Theater Inn. Theater N, absolutely. You, you know what the N stand for? Don't you? No mores. It, it, negative. <laughs> it doesn't? It stands for, we're going to be up in there. Oh, you know what? <laughs> That's what it's going to be that night. We're in the building, That's baby. That's what it's going to be that night. Theater, <laughs> we're in the building. <laughs> we're changing it. I'm excited, man. I, I really am. Um, I, I just, I can't wait for this event to happen and uh, to be able to sit back and just be like, man, we did that. Mama, we made it. Yeah, mama, we made it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nah, that's going to be dope. I'm yeah, definitely yeah. So, looking yeah, forward to So, guys, log in, re- rebirthu.com, get your tickets. If you are looking to be a vendor or sponsor, we're going to be dropping that information on Wednesday. But you can go to my website and you can get that information. There's only going to be limited slots for vending. And I believe three of them are already taken. We haven't even dropped the information yet. Wow. So um, wow. make sure you guys, um, you know, pay attention and follow us. Follow us on all social media platforms, Rebirth underscore radio, on Instagram, uh, Rebirth on Facebook. And um, and we also follow Philly Jams because I also share the information on there. All right. So let's get into the show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So tonight's show. Do we have a um right here, right now? Real quick. Or? I just want to touch on one thing. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get right to it because it's two in one. I want to talk about Miss Fannie Willis really quick. Okay, if you're not, Fannie. If you don't know who she is, she is the uh, district attorney for Fulton County, Georgia. Mm. Um, my sister, eight Howard University graduate. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, she uh, is in the process of getting ready to go at this at this fool, Donald Trump. Uh, and the, here's the thing that I love most about her. Even though she's receiving these threats on her life, uh, all these people are talking crazy. He's even attacking her um, now in the media. Um, this sister is standing strong. Um, and she has said, this is the thing that made me proud. Because people were giving her a hard time when she was prosecuting Young Thug and all them people. And I'm like, mm-hmm. listen, if you're rich and you're still doing dumb shit, go, go to jail. Like, mm-hmm. what, are, what are you doing? Like, why are you still in the streets? You made it. Right. And you're still gangbanging. What are you doing? Right. If you're white and you're doing dumb stuff and you go to jail, go to jail. You wasted your whiteness. Mm-hmm. You you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to do this. You that's gonna always be a way for you. So if you choose to do dumb stuff and go to jail, well, that's all you right. right. Now, this guy who had who would seek to influence the results of the twenty twenty election. Down there asking them people for 11,000 votes. All I need is 11,700 votes, and I can win the election. Nah, bro, you about to go to jail. I hope. I don't think he's going to go to jail, but I hope. But the thing I'm going to enjoy the most, when he's indicted, she's going to fingerprint him and take his mug shot like everybody else. The same <laughs> way he did Young Thug and his friends. Right. Donald Trump will be treated the same way. I look forward to that moment. His mug shot will be my new Do profile picture. you think it's going to happen? I think he'll get indicted. Will he go to jail? Huh. But here's the thing. So if he gets indicted, he can't run, right? No, 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 no. If the people vote him in, he can still be oh the president. My God. He can literally be in prison because it's the it's vote of the people and still become the president of the United States. That's crazy. So you, we, people still got to vote. That's crazy. Don't think he's going to go away. But I'm damn near. Is DeSantis worse than him? Because <laughs> that joker right there, good right? Lord. Trump yeah. functions on ignorance. I think DeSantis is, is calculated. <sighs> I don't, do I want to say racism? It's it's calculated prejudice. I'm a, I'm gonna stay right there with that for now. But Trump is just just ignorant. Like the people who who support mm-hmm. him and vote for him, he would never sit down and have a soda with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He yeah. wouldn't even shake them people. If you look at the yeah. people, no teeth. They out there riding around them old trucks with the. Like, he wouldn't deal with you. Yeah. Yeah. So I want this man to have some consequences. We're talking about a person who's never had any consequences in this whole 79 Not years on earth. All. But nothing. A lawsuit here and there, but you know, that, that can go away with a settlement. But I need him to go. I need her to, I need that mugshot, Fanny. 
Shout out to Fannie Willis. Fannie, I think is Fannie uh, Willis. Fannie Willis. Okay. Let me say her, if I can say her middle name. She got like a very ethnic middle name too, but I couldn't. <laughs> I ain't gonna even mess it up. Anyway, sis, let's go, baby. Let's go. All right. All That's right. What's up? That's if, and she's the first woman district attorney for Fulton County, Georgia. That is your Black History Fact for tonight. Let's go. All right. Thank you, Eli. <clears throat> Yes, indeed. <laughs> I've been off. I'm ready. Yeah. Listen, speaking <laughs> of racism, you know, this it's crazy. It's really real because do you know that I have been getting com racist comments underneath the post that I have been posting for the Rebirth Live on Facebook on my Rebirth page? Really? Yes. I don't know where these fools are coming from. But I've had people say, um, all lives matter. I had people say, uh, Griffer alert. Um, what was the other one? Uh, stop being racist to white people. And when I look at their page, all of them are, are they're racist. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not for sure what's going on. I was looking at my hashtags. I'm like, well, what the hell? What is going on? You know? So I don't know where this is coming from, but that's just, unfortunately, when you wow. put yourself that's out to in. the public yeah. and stuff, mm -hmm. you you know. But I have so much good coming in that the the negative is not touching me. So y'all right. can keep on posting on. Just, yes. I'm not even feeding that energy. That's negative energy. You're, you're getting blocked. You're getting reported. And, you know, you're a non-MFN factor. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's get into the show. Let's get into the show. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rebirth on Philly Jams 95.3 FM. Tonight, tonight, <laughs> y'all, we are talking about women breaking the rules. What does that mean? Women breaking the rules. I am so excited to have these two young ladies back on the show. I love these girls. They're not just guests they are like my little sisters because I'm, I'm i'm the old head in the bunch <laughs> but they are my little sisters and i love them so much and both of them have poured so much into me and in my brand and you know no matter what no matter what it is that i needed i can always call them and they show up and i really really appreciate appreciate that so welcome to the rebirth Jen Fontel and Miss Eman Faye. Hey. Hello. Hey. Hey. Ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Welcome you for back. having us. Yes, I'm so happy to have you guys. Remember we were all on here together? Like yes. <laughs> That just came up not too long ago, too. It had popped up. Um... Maybe about, I think we did that two years ago. Was it? It can't be. They, I think it was here? about two years. Yeah. Yeah, they were here. Oh I think God. you were out. And it was it was ladies' night. No, yeah, a year and a half, got, two, wow. something oh like that. Gosh. Yeah, it's yeah, been wow. some time. Oh yes, God. it has. It has mm -hmm. been. So welcome back. I'm so happy to have you guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. I'm yes. excited to be back. Yes. I'm feeling all that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Time flew. It might be less than that. It's, it's probably no, less. Than no, that. I think you're, I think you're right. Okay, yeah, All I right. think you're right. It's just yeah. It's I mean, look, the summer you blink. The summer was over. Yeah. Summer is out summer of was here. over, Literally. right? And it rained half of the summer. Oh so I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you for coming in. Thank you guys who who was tuning in on social media. We are happy to have you. Listen, if you have comments, make sure you put them in the chat. Um, if you want to call up and join the conversation, you can call us at 267-908-3166. So, ladies, we are talking about, and, and guys. <laughs> I know I've been going, but We damn. are talking about women <laughs> breaking the rules. Mm. Okay? And specifically, black women. All right, mm. them folk on your Come page, on. and I already told you to stop being Black listening. women, You're right? Still not listening. I am not listening, <laughs> right? So before I get into that, I, I have a question. I want to know from from you both, what does it mean to be a black woman? Mm. And Eman, we'll start with you. <laughs> what does it mean to be a black woman? Mm -hmm. It means everything. It means a lot. Um, just. It's a way you have to, I don't know, it's, I feel like it's positive, then it comes with like some negative. It's, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't even know how to answer this question, honestly. Mm -hmm. I really don't because, I don't know, it's every day, it's just life. Mm -hmm. But it's something that you just have to take into account in everything that you do. Um, like the way you show up for yourself, um, different, 
I don't know, jobs you take, the way you talk, even in your business, like mm-hmm. you were just saying, like the things you say, how you say it, like mm-hmm. it seems like any wrong move, it's like you're trying to disrupt something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. in a way, it's like you're walking on eggshells mm-hmm. if you don't have a certain confidence with you. So I don't know. That's, okay, that's all I got. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you, like Jen. <laughs> what does it mean to be a black woman to you? Ooh, that was a heavy hitter question. Um, the head start itching over there. Okay. <laughs> um, for me, I feel I feel like to be black, especially in this day and age, being a black woman means being resilient. Mm-hmm. Um, also kind of being adaptable being being able to kind of adapt to situations not only just in relationships but also in work Mm -hmm. as well um also being mindful like e-man said like you know of how we come off right or how people may perceive things that Mm -hmm. we may say right because oftentimes it may be labeled as being aggressive or too Mm -hmm. assertive or you know she's too manly and i feel like i don't know it's when I think about black women, I think about adaptable. I think about the word resilience. I, and sometimes this has may have a negative con- connotation, but the desire to always to be strong mm-hmm. and to uphold so much, mm-hmm. you know, juggle so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, and and I may be going off on a little tangent, but I just feel like to be a black woman too is like you hold so much depth to you. So much. There's so much more than what meets the eye and I hope that makes sense like yeah absolutely there's a lot of things that we balance and juggle just to be Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. absolutely that's what I meant to say that's a good (laughs) 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 question What about you? Um, for me, um, I, I I have to say I love being a black woman, mm. especially right now. Mm. Um, I think that we as black women we have so much opportunity at our fingertips right now that we did not have. Come on. Um, you know, years ago, um, we are standing on the shoulders of our ancestors of some powerful women that did not get the acknowledgement or the approval. Um, being a black woman is powerful. It's electrifying. It's evolving. Mm. You know, um, the word you use is, is resiliency, right? Mm. Um, so I, I love it. I embrace um, everything about being a black woman. I embrace my, you know, my natural hair. I embrace my skin tone because even within our own race, we have colorism that exists right so you may be a black woman but if you're a lighter skinned black woman right there was an issue with darker skinned black women and we're gonna get into that right i am a chocolate black woman and i love everything about me and i I have curves and i love everything about that you know what i'm saying so um (laughs) you know yeah it's just all magic for me i love it i love it um so shout out to everybody that's tuning in, Darlene Brown, Corey Vance, hey, Mama. Thank you guys for tuning in um, and supporting the rebirth. So we're going to get into our conversation and we're talking about women breaking barriers. So this came um, up for me. I was watching this new documentary that's on Netflix called Ladies First. Mm-hmm. And um, I grew up in the, the 90s area and, you know, Queen Latifah when she came out with the, the song Ladies First mm-hmm. and all of that. So yeah. um, and the documentary is actually highlighting hip hop artists, but not only hip hop artists, but women of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, your, your A&R people that was signing hip hop, these groups, male groups that we didn't even realize that women were behind these groups Mm -hmm. that were pushing them and signing them to these labels and there were their tour managers and all kinds of stuff. So if you have not watched Ladies First, I'm telling you, check it out. Um, It it has a lot. I haven't finished it. I'm in like the first few episodes, but just from watching the first few episodes, it's been very enlightened. Yes. Okay. Okay. It is. Yes. So, um, so let's let's dive in into that with uh, women breaking rules and not just rules um, in music, but rules in finance, rules uh, when it comes down to in your home, in your careers. We have elevated to a whole different level where you're seeing women in places that we were told we were not supposed to be. So what do you guys think about that? And 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 I want to hear your response as well, Eli. Okay, very well. Yes. You will. 
<laughs> hey, Miss Barbara, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. So what is your response when I say women breaking bar- breaking uh, rules? What do you think? It's just us showing up. We showing up. We showing up. Mm-hmm. We sh- we're showing. We're doing everything that we said we would do. Mm-hmm. Um, everything that people thought we couldn't do. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's just us showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's it can get a little it can get a little messy sometimes because women are sometimes judged based on like their actions and their their presence and the things that they do, mm-hmm. as opposed to men who are all not gonna say always men who tend to be more so like based on their potential and things of that nature. So women, if we we have to show up, we have to actually do things. Like, so I feel like right now us breaking the rules is just us showing up for ourselves. Yeah. And a lot of people might not like it, but yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Like yeah. I said, we don't get we don't get the um we don't get to be judged on our potential. Mm-hmm. We have to be judged on what we do right. and how we show up. Right. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're you're uh you're a black woman. <clears throat> you're a black woman, but you all you're also a black woman who owns a business. Mm-hmm. And you show up for your business every day, right? Yes. Um so the thing can you just let the audience know what you do about your business and what challenges have you had, okay. you know, being a black woman and and doing the business that you do. Okay. So I run two businesses actually. Um one is a manifest club. Um it is an entrepreneurial firm where we help women um get funding for their businesses and with their business startup. And the other one is I'm a nurse. So mm-hmm. this is a medical training center. And for both of my businesses, um like even going to let's say the bank. Right. When you're going to the bank to get funding for something. I feel like they judge you the moment you walk in the door. So you got to yeah. be conscious of the way that you dress, conscious of the makeup that you have on, conscious of um, how you're talking. Like, mm-hmm. you got to be careful, even, like, in business conversations, not to be too friendly, but not to be too standoffish. It's right. just, like, you always have to find a balance mm-hmm. because it can easily turn into mm-hmm. being flirtatious or um, being arrogant. It's it's. It's right. a very thin line that you always have to kind of straddle. Mm-hmm. Um, and you would think that that wouldn't be the case, especially nowadays, but it's real. Absolutely. It shows up in business every day. Absolutely. Even going into a room um, full of men, mm-hmm. you have to be conscious of the way that you walk in and make sure like that you, you know, like you kind of demand some type of, I don't know, authority. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to drop credentials left and right, left and right, just so mm-hmm. people can really like believe, like, believe in you because like right. i said it's not about your potential anymore it's about actions and what you can stand on and what you've actually done yeah so i think that shows up constantly yeah in my businesses yeah and it's annoying yeah absolutely <laughs> it's so annoying absolutely that's a lot it to think is. about in the midst of trying to get some business handled yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's i gotta so walk annoying. this way i gotta talk this way mm-hmm. i gotta not be too forward i gotta not be too st- that's a lot don't bat yeah. your eyes too much don't blink that Look, much stop blinking like, it legit yeah. feels like being a black woman sometimes feels like a dance, you know, mm. and there are days where I don't have energy, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, to participate in that dance. And there's other days where, like Iman is saying, and just being mindful of how you show up in different spaces because mm-hmm. yeah. that could impact the opportunities that you receive. Right. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Wow. You got to keep cutting it off and cutting it on and cutting it off and cutting it on. It's like, it's a word for it. I just can't think of a word right exhausting. now. Exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting. Yeah. Can, it's another word for it. Too. I can't think of it right now. Exhausting. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. So hearing some of the things that um, man is saying and, and Jen is saying, like, is this new information for you or is this something that you actually, yeah, I've heard this before. I've heard it, but I also, mm-hmm. on the flip side of that, I think black women in general have been celebrated. Ten, like, if you think about how maybe our parents, mm-hmm. your, your mother, I figure your mother and my mother probably cl- would have been close in age mm-hmm. if my mother was here. I don't think their generation was celebrated to the degree because they didn't have the opportunities. I don't think they were celebrated to the degree that black women are today. No. So mm-hmm. even though you guys have to deal with all of that in the midst of it, mm-hmm. you get to walk that path and uh, uh, obtain those goals at the same time. Now, mm-hmm. the other stuff is some foolishness, and I hate you have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. But mm-hmm. I think black women are celebrated, even with that documentary. I think I think right now black women are celebrated probably more than any other time in history. <sighs> no. <laughs> it's, I, I, I'm on the line with that because at the same time, I feel like we are probably the least appreciated. Mm. Um, you know, uh, and, and unfortunately, not even just by, by outside races, but even within our own race, mm-hmm. you know, um, I hate to hear, unfortunately, black men talk down or speak 
badly about our black women or say that we're not dating black women because they're angry or because they're too assertive or because they're this, because they're that, whatever the case may be, as if they were not born from a black yeah. woman, mm. right? So I, I think, again, I think it's the dance that you speak of, yeah. and I, I think that it's, it's both. You have both sides of it. Mm -hmm. I do agree that this is probably... The most we've seen black women being celebrated. Yeah. But man, we work hard. Mm -hmm. We work Learn hard it. to get there. And yeah. we still have to fight to prove ourselves. And we still have to fight to be mm -hmm. in certain rooms. Yeah, right? exactly. So I want to talk about... Um, what's up, Corey? I want to talk about... Um, the one episode that I, I saw, and, and again, this this documentary is called First Lady, or Ladies First. <laughs> I can mess up some names. <laughs> Ladies First is on Netflix, and it's really highlighting hip-hop, women in hip-hop, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that came up, now I don't know if y'all remember Roxanne Shante. Mm -hmm. Okay. We probably Back do. in the day, we do. <laughs> These ones right here, you know, y'all was a little bit younger, so... Roxanne Shante, she was like one of the first female rappers that was spitting and was out there yeah. battling. She was one of one of the first Bars. female battle. Mm. Yeah, that was battling, right? I saw the movie. Yes, you saw the movie. Okay. <laughs> so um Roxanne Shante at that time was only 14 years old. It's crazy. She was only 14 years old. Mm. Okay, and she was just she was she was battling people, just knocking them out, knocking them out. Mm. Now another group that I like, Karis One, Boogie Down Productions. If y'all remember that, my old heads. Mm. Woo -woo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> people on the floor, we talking to y'all too. Don't try to act like y'all. I know, right? Like these only two. <laughs> All right, go ahead. So <laughs> one of the things that Karis One has said in one of his rhymes was that Shan Roxanne Shante was only good for. Sexing. Doing the diss. Yeah, doing the diss. He that was, was a little diss right, back and forth. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He I remember He was saying that, that he, he, she was only good for sexing and having sex with, right? And that blew up. That comment really blew up because he was talking about a 14-year-old female. A 14-year-old female, right? Now, the crazy thing is, back then, it didn't hit me. But when I saw it on the documentary... It all, I had to process that. Yeah. Because he was a grown man and she was 14 years old. Lighten their ass that's up, crazy. though. crazy. Lighten them up, and that's the thing. <laughs> the ego got involved. The, the mm. ego got involved, yeah. right? So, you know, and it just went back and forth and it went back and forth, right? Mm. And and then the other thing was um, uh, the brat. They were talking about her and how she, when she got signed, she was told that. There's never been a female rapper that has ever gone platinum. So don't expect that. Wow. Don't expect that. But she was so hungry. She was like, I don't care if I go triple glass. <laughs> I will be happy with that, right? Yeah. But guess what? She was the first female hip-hop rap artist that ever went platinum. Mm. The Brat was. The first female hip-hop when she was told that no female has ever done it. And the close, the closest you can get will be gold. Wow! Right? And MC Light was, she she loved MC Light because MC Light, her image was what Brat yeah. saw. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. it's it's just interesting how some of this stuff happens, um, and you see these people now, but what they had to fight through, especially the female hip hop artists, the stuff that they had to go through, the struggle. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about the men where the rappers have always been sexualizing females. Mm -hmm. And now we're in a day where female hip hop artists are running. They, they're they out there. Your Nicki Minaj's, your Megan Thee Stallion's, your Lottos, and guess what? They are very, they are speaking whatever, but they're being told they're saying too much. Y'all sharing too much. Mm -hmm. Y'all too sexualized. So I want to talk about that because having why was it okay for the men to sexualize <laughs> us, but now when we take that power back mm. and talk about stuff, now they want us, they want women to hush. Let's talk about that. I said a mouthful. Yeah, you had a whole lot going on right there. Welcome back. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey there. So, Eli, you should start with this. Okay, thing. so listen. So I'll, I'll say, um, 
there's always been this thing with men and women and how men want to not all men how some men have always wanted to hold women in a certain place in their head in a certain place in their mind and how a woman should carry herself mm-hmm. how a woman should look how she should act how she should dress and be I, I think that problem i haven't seen a documentary yet mm-hmm. but i think because of that that attitude and that way of thinking this is why they get some of the backlash now the flip side is that these these are the same men that like to go to, to magic city and all these places and see the women naked. Right. They like to look at Megan Thee Stallion. They might not, you know, you say what you want to say, but you you look at her. I look mm-hmm. at her. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I mean? And so it's a, it's a weird thing that that men do sexualize women. And but then I say you say it's called taking the taking their power back. But does it does it add to that way of thinking as opposed to actually taking their power back? Like, does it reinforce the way men think about the way some men sexualize women mm-hmm. when when mm-hmm. when women do rap and dress and say the things that they say? Mm-hmm. Not saying that they should. I think a woman should be able to do whatever she wants to mm-hmm. do. But does it reinforce that attitude mm-hmm. toward women? Mm-hmm. What do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you yeah, can do I that. It. You're half it. naked and we're going to look. Mm-hmm. And But it, it's the same thing as saying, oh, you meet a girl in the club and she's bad. You see her, she got everything you like. Mm-hmm. And you take her home. This is the attitude of, right. of a lot of men. I used okay. to have it. You take her home and you hit, I, she could never be my girl after that. Okay. Mm-hmm. I slept with her on the first night too. Yeah, <laughs> no why one's is saying that? that Pause. Why I could is never that? be their husband. Right, but why is that? I think back in the day, because you know what? Because you learn dumb shit from dumb older people. If you don't have a real man in your life to teach you, <laughs> I'm just going to give it to you bare bones. If you don't have a real man in your life to teach you certain mm-hmm. things, then you will carry the attitude of the neighborhood, of your older brothers or, of your, or your uncles, what you've heard people say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of like, it, it's just some stupidity that's passed down. Now, men do not want to marry in their mind. They don't mm-hmm. want to feel like they're marrying the neighborhood that everybody's had either. Mm-hmm. Now, unfairly, because a man can be the neighborhood hoe and nobody's, right. and we change his mm-hmm. life. Right. And he wants to get married. Somebody grab him up just like that. Right. If, he's, if he's changed his life and become a good man. Right. Okay. But a woman can change her life and be uh, and be the greatest woman ever. Mm-hmm. A, a prime example, and because I'm gonna let the ladies go. Okay. My 10-year high school class reunion. That was a girl we went to high school with. Everybody hit right. She was the joint that you know you could hit. Here we are, 10 years removed from high school. Mm-hmm. We're now 28, 29. She's a completely different person. But all we could think of, we were still right. holding her to who she was in high school. Mm. Somebody was like, yo, I might try to hit so-and-so tonight because if thing is she's that same person. Right. So right. it's just an attitude. It's ignorance. It's, it's disrespectful. I've had it. I've had it, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm a product of delivered. being around ignorant-ass men. Yeah. And no and no one teaching me how to be a man. Yeah. You know, so, so yeah, I don't know. We just put women in a certain place, and then you're supposed to stay there. Right. Mm. Interesting. Some men, not all men. Yeah. I can't speak to every man, but. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, I feel like that kind of reaffirms why I think why women work so we like we have to work that much harder I feel like because of you know societal standards gender stereotypes Mm -hmm. um you know it's a it's a lot of hard work to be a woman and a black woman at that you know what I mean and when I think about you know women breaking rules I think about going against the norm right and being pioneers being the first right you know, um, making significant sacrifices, right? And in watching that documentary, they talked a little bit about how, you know, there was a lot of, you know, women hip-hop artists before the ones that we know are mm-hmm. you know, very popular now. They they crawled so we could walk, right? right. Mm. And so, I don't know. I just feel like, I hope that answers your, your, your question, Shay. But I just kind of feel like, I don't know. That just, what you said, Eli, just re-emphasizes why we have to work so hard the yep. way that we mm-hmm. do because of that that double standard that stereotype mm-hmm. and in that documentary it remind me of i don't know if you rem- remember seeing that clip where snoop dogg had yes. such an issue about the wap video yes. right but then in the same well he had a uh, they rolled back uh-huh. the tape and and so just to explain that so we you guys know that um that was megan and cardi, cardi. b mm-hmm. had did um the song wap right and we all know what that stands for i don't need to say it so that song got so much backlash because women were empowering and basically saying, you know what, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Snoop Dogg is on air, on, you know, footage saying that we need to, the women need to save certain things, 
you know, like we don't want to know everything and yeah. stuff like that. But then when they roll back footage of some of his songs and videos, it was pretty much saying the same thing, talking about the same thing. So more if you're <laughs> able to say it, why? What makes it different from if it's coming out of a man's mouth versus it comes coming out of a, a woman's mouth, mm. right? Yeah, I think it's inappropriate, like on both sides. Right, and right, right. Nowadays, is because of the internet, and we have like direct access to everybody's <laughs> entire life. Mm. So when we're looking at these rappers and these artists, chill, like younger children are looking at them as role models, mm -hmm. even though. They shouldn't be the ones you're looking at to, you know, as role models, but they are. Like I have a ten year old and I wouldn't want her listening to that song. Yeah. Um, because I would think it would be inappropriate for her to hear. And if she's looking up to people like um Cardi B, mm -hmm. she might unconsciously try to like, you know, start to think that stuff is okay. But at the same time, I listen to songs back in the day mm -hmm. and they they was just as bad as they are today. Exactly. Listening to like Little Kim, the things Little Kim yeah. used to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've Brown. been talking and stuff. Foxy Brown, they've been talking yes. and stuff. The only difference yes. is now we have so much access to people's lives mm -hmm. that you want yeah. them to be this, this role model. Right. And that's not what they're there for. Mm -hmm. So you want Cardi B to be this upstanding citizen, you know, a role model to your child, the perfect mom, the perfect woman, the perfect mm -hmm. all of that, because maybe your children or whoever are looking at them like I said, as a role model, when that's not the case. Like, yeah. you can't put that on these artists. Yeah, Because no, I'm not going to say nobody was saying it back when Lil' Kim and I was on it, but it wasn't as big as it is now. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that's why. Yeah. Because yeah. people feel so entitled to other people's lives now mm -hmm. that they didn't, they didn't have that entitlement back mm -hmm. then. Mm. So I have a question for you, ladies. Okay. So one of the, to me, one of the dopest rappers, female rappers out right now that wouldn't, and unfortunately she would never ascend to the level of making a stallion, Lotto, or any of these people, is Rhapsody. She's yeah. on that documentary. Is she on there? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. Dope, Dope as hell. She is. Why we don't, about why that. don't, why don't people, why don't other, other black women get behind them? Get behind an artist like Rhapsody. Was that touched on in the thing? So, exactly. Rhapsody was touched on, and they did say that Rhapsody is like one of the dopest female rappers that's that out there. And can flow. Right? So, yes. if you're not rapping about certain things, number mm. one, first of all, it's not even about women not getting behind her because it, being someone that was in the music industry, music industry is ran by men. It is a man's world. It is. Now, yes, you're going to see um, in this documentaries some amazing female uh, writers, hip hop writers, creators, producers, managers, and all of that. But you don't see them when you're out there. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't know about these people until you're watching something like this mm -hmm. because it's more, it's a male dominant um, area, yeah. right? So if you're, if you don't look a certain way, Rhapsody, from what I can remember, she wore her natural hair. She wore it like, you know. And she's pretty, too. So if you don't look a certain way, if you're not the, a certain complexion, um, if you're not showing a certain amount of skin, then they don't want you. Mm. They're not getting behind you. And they're, they're talking about this. They were even talking about the Sugar Hill Gang when they did um, that song. Uh, Rapper's Delight, was mm -hmm, it Rapper's mm -hmm. Delight? When they did Rapper's Delight, that they pulled, if you look at the video, they pulled a bunch of white women in that video mm -hmm. for it to be a crossover. Mm -hmm. It was white women, look it up. It was white women in that video. For it, You didn't see black women in that video. And if you did, they were very light-skinned. Well, they did that in the 50s and 60s with, like, soul artists. They would put, the song would be a hit, and then the album cover would be a white person. Mm-hmm. Just to sell because mm -hmm. people weren't gonna buy it if it was they wouldn't put no money in a black person's pocket back in them days. Yeah. Now I don't know if that's just, that's the same thing as far as that part is concerned, mm -hmm. but I know they would do stuff like that. The marketing would just be yeah. weird, even Absolutely. though yeah. Look at Missy Elliott, right? So they yeah, talked about that, Missy. right? Talented, talented person. Missy changed the game because she took everything that they talked about her. She was she was either too dark, she was too fat, she wasn't pretty enough. She took all of that and and changed it and and used it and I mean she killed she it. She killed it. Yeah. She killed She's it. She's a legend mm -hmm. now because right? of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So it can be done. So why don't Missy didn't show skin? So it can be done. But that's my question. Like, but, but, how do we? Do, how can we? Like why do we associate like songs like um why why do we associate that with women empowerment? 
instead mm-hmm. of things like I said, like Missy Elliott's right. actions and her mm-hmm. her resilience and That's her overcoming all of like how like I'm trying to figure out who changed that narrative and when when did it get changed? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because when I hear hear that song, my first thought is, oh my God, I feel so empowered. Mm-hmm. That's not what I right. think. Right. And I'm not and I'm not <laughs> right. saying that that's the wrong thought. That's just not what I think personally. Absolutely. Right. I'm just right. trying to figure out at what point did mm. that become women empowerment? Right. Instead of mm. something else. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I I absolutely agree. I think that, you know, did you wanna Go you ahead. wanna chime in on <laughs> that? Um I, I, I think that because the industry was so sexualized, the empowerment piece is they're taking it back from the men. So gotcha. I'm gonna put it out there mm. before y'all do now. So if y'all already talking about the WAP and the booty and all of this other stuff, mm-hmm. then we're gonna put it out there before y'all do, and we're gonna we're gonna kill you in your own game ten times more, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Because it's females are now taking over the rap. Yeah, is you know what I'm saying? Understood. So that's that's where the I empowerment piece. Where that link up? Where the yeah, link was? That's yeah. where the empowerment <laughs> piece is coming from. It doesn't mean like again, and I said this earlier. I don't necessarily approve Mm -hmm. of what's happening, but I understand Understand why it's happening. Let's get to some of these uh, comments. So Jen said that WAP stands for worship and pray. No, it does not. Nice man. Nice man. Nice man. So they talked about the Mary Jane girls. Yeah, that was another uh, another group that got Climax was another group. I I remember Climax. Climax. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tosh says sex sells, and that's what it's all based on. Absolutely. Mm. It's no longer about the music anymore. It's not. Corey says some men get intimidated when women on low power as opposed to assigning it to them. Definitely a double standard. Yes, it is, Corey. Mm -hmm. Um, How about your favorite artists are broke? (laughs) Everything is fake. (laughs) Yep, that's another thing. Uh, Corey Um, Van. I'm not saying her name. He went to high school with me. He wants to know know who that person was. (laughs) I mean, think about Jen said Vanity Six. Think about Prince. Prince was dry humping on the stage and touching what? himself and all of that stuff, right? He had his he had his. <laughs> but um, did he get a pass because his he booty was cheeks androgynous? Out. Like, had he been um, a man? And I'm not saying Prince was a masculine, but had he just been who? Name another man. Teddy Pendergrass doing all that. Prince got a lot of passes. <laughs> <laughs> he did get a lot of passes. So did he? I think he got. I think he got away with those things because he so appealed to women. Like he, he looked like a woman, but he had all the baddest women. He was just pretty. Mm. <laughs> His pretty. eyes pretty. was mesmerizing. <laughs> I'm still amazed by the brother wearing the pumps. Like how yeah, did I you know. do that? I, I know. Exactly, but again, he made his own rules. Mm. So either you liked him like or, or you didn't he like him. He wore blouses, Shay. I know. He made his own rules. You don't even say, do they make blouses anymore? <laughs> right. <laughs> blouses. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's move on for the music and let's talk about breaking rules in careers. Let's talk about breaking rules in, in, the, in the home, right? Because now we have women that are making more than their spouses and they are in the in they're they're in a workforce where yeah. you have some men that are actually are home taking care of the home and and being the dad and and all of that so let's let's talk about that how do y'all feel about that i feel like i'll speak specifically when it comes to working in corporate i think mm-hmm. being black and working in corporate is again a dance it's, it can be very challenging i feel like with some of my you know other counterparts you know I have to work twice as hard just to be even seen, Mm -hmm. right? And sometimes I feel like my other counterparts, they get more grace, right? And they can do the bare minimum and get acknowledged, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I feel like breaking the norm in that setting is, you know, learning to kind of speak up and advocate for myself and applying discernment of when to talk, Mm -hmm. when to speak up for myself, Mm -hmm. because not everything's worth, you know, discussing or bringing up. And it's, again, it's a dance, right? Right. Right. Um, so that that's what breaking norms for me looks like in corporate setting. Okay. Do you feel like you have to avoid the potential title of the angry yes. black woman? Yes. Yes. Or you know the difficult one. Yeah. Right. Or because I mean, especially in corporate, if you rub someone the wrong way, if you deem too aggressive or too assertive, you could be blackballed from mm-hmm. other opportunities. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so now it's like you're trying to kind of move up through. You're trying to move up and advance yourself in the opportunities and. If, because of, again, you know, stereotypes and things of that nature and being kind of labeled as the difficult one. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
it black again black spot keeps you from moving forward yeah you know isn't that what happened to monique the comedian mm-hmm. oh remember yeah. That? yeah that was a big one what, that was by the black folk right right but yeah. i'm speaking of both buy. i'm not i'm not just speaking about the outside race i'm actually i'm speaking with okay, both okay, okay, yeah okay. absolutely okay. and and unfortunately yeah we will blackball our own people mm-hmm. you know which is not cool you mean I th- see i think when it comes to that i just think we have to be careful um when it comes to breaking the rules sometimes because mm-hmm. it's like where does it always get us um i think about back um like last time when we were here and we were talking about independent black women mm-hmm. and i think independent black women was a term that came from us um trying to take our power back because we were um considered aggressive and a lot more aggressive than than the other races Mm -hmm. so maybe i don't know like the men didn't need black women and then okay now we took our power back because we don't need no black men Mm -hmm. and then it turned around and kind of backfired Mm -hmm. and not saying that it's anything wrong with being an independent black woman but me personally I don't want to have to be an independent black woman. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want that anymore. I don't want to break those rules anymore. And then when you look into the households and how the rules change in a household, um, and now you have the black females making more than the men. You know, black men make substantially less um, in corporate America compared to all, like a lot of the, I'm not going to say all, but a lot of the other races. Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel like all of this came from, we were, you know, breaking rules. So now the mom is out the house working. Um, you work in two, three jobs or 12-hour shifts. Um, the dad maybe is home raising the kids if he's doing it right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's home with the kids and, you know, taking care of the kids. But it's like the roles change. We can <laughs> <I'm just saying, laughs> those roles change, it's like um, it's a power struggle. The power mm-hmm. struggle flips too. It's a switch that changes. It's just right. you can't change the roles without changing everything else. It's going to mm-hmm. disrupt everything else. It's like a butterfly mm-hmm. effect. Mm-hmm. So... When we start breaking the rules, I feel like, like I said, it's you got to be kind of mindful of how we're breaking them because sometimes it just kind of backfires on you mm-hmm. as opposed to being, and it could be years down the line, generations down the line, but I don't know. That's yeah. kind of how I look at it. That's a, um, it's, no, I, I definitely understand. I, I definitely understand what you're saying. And um, I think... And I don't this, even know if that was like question. <laughs> this is like a whole nother area um, because when we start talking about how our men have been removed from the home, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. even when, if, if, when we start talking about the population of our black men that was getting locked up and removed from the home mm-hmm. where women had to step up, we couldn't just be nurturers but also providers. Mm-hmm. Now, that's a whole nother show. Um, It's a whole nother show, right? But um, let's get into some of the comments a little bit. I want to make sure we get to everybody. E, you want to read some of them Uh, all? Yeah, Jen says it's a losing battle. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mm -hmm. Men don't want you if you're too easy, but also don't want you if you're not damn. (laughs) Gotta walk that little thin line. It's it's a thin line. (laughs) And that goes back to what I was saying about if I meet you in a club and take you home, I can't now I can't take you seriously. But who do why do I get to set that standard? Why do men get to set that standard and women go along with that? I mean they have went along with it. I'm not saying women go along with it. Like women can have a one women have one night stands all the time now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's not like or they may initiate it if that's what they choose to do. But I don't think I don't think it holds I don't know. Does it still hold women back? I mean, I've been out the game for a long time, mm. but I know back when I was a youngster, if that happened, you didn't have a chance. It was meet my mama. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't think <laughs> that is. I, don't I, it, I mean, again, ignorance, but it's just what, right. how we were taught is is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so Francie said, "I heard men are the ones writing for female rappers nowadays." So Ooh. actually, they actually um, they talked, talked about, about this, and they actually said that that was the rumor but no women are actually writing their own raps that they are writing their own raps um if you get a chance check it out on on netflix because they actually speak to this um sir Francie. uh Corey do, says, if i do roll wop i'm out of here <laughs> 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 like how do you get into that mind state brother <laughs> Corey says um, women are all things so they are both sexy and mind thinking so we have a scale that is tipped there's room for mm. both, but Rhapsody isn't represented on a large scale. She is absolutely not. And Corey Van says, uh, he was just joking, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Jen says, we the only people with cancel culture. Mm. That's very true. All them white men rape them to oh Lord, she oh, great. Wow. Give me sense. All the, I don't even know how to read this, but I'm gonna go ahead. All the white men rape them children and they still on TV getting their music played, etc. But as soon as R. Kelly did it, 
he was done, canceled, definitely. Not Give saying yourself. that Give he yourself. did was a, what he did was okay, but he had a shot. He had no shot, mm. even before being proven guilty. Yeah, that's a whole nother show, Jen. <laughs> 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 so, um, to speak to what you're saying, um, I think that a lot of that is also how we're raised, right? Mm. The, the norms that society and family, religion, belief, yeah. whatever you, you mm-hmm. know, your beliefs and values are, mm-hmm. you're not supposed to do this. You need to be, if you're, if you're out past a certain time, there's nothing open but leg, right? <laughs> yeah. We all heard these, we've heard these little, these little, <laughs> that was my grandma. We've heard, we've heard these little sayings, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> that's my old school shit right there. It is. I mean, you know, so I, I think that um. some of the stuff that we grew up with, right, from from generations, generations, it, it kind of came on down the line. Now, I don't know what this generation is, you know, what the beliefs and value system is moving forward, but it yeah. has definitely changed. I think it's it not, comes from social media. It's not yeah. what a it big was. part of it. Yeah. I really we believe that. We didn't have social media yeah. when we grew up. I really believe that. You know, so it's, it's social media has definitely changed the game. Good and bad. Yeah. yeah. Good and bad. You have some things that social media, internet, you know what? That's it. It was helpful, mm-hmm. but then you have things where it's just like this is not cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is not good. You know, especially when it comes down to our young black girls exactly. when they look at um you know these social media instagram models and think that that's what they're supposed to look like or that's what beauty is mm-hmm. when i grew up you know your commercials you didn't see black women on commercials like that you know what i'm saying so everything was your pen you when were supposed soul to train was on hair. you only saw black you commercials supposed, right that's the only time you saw exactly right yes. so, all black commercials you know yeah. we were already <laughs> i'm dating myself <laughs> not liking our our complexion not mm-hmm. liking our hair because yeah. It was com- the commercials that was yeah. there was always your pen. Mm. It wasn't you didn't see us, right? Yeah. Now you have you have cartoons like Gracie. My um girlfriend Levante, she brought her son over to my house and she turned on this um commercial this uh cartoon called Gracie that comes on YouTube. I had a ball, okay? <laughs> Gracie is, I'm telling you, yeah, she's black. Mm. And she took all those little nursery rhyme songs yeah. and put some beat behind it, and she jamming. I had a good time watching Gracie, <laughs> and I am not going to be YouTube. Ba- it's on YouTube. And I watched Gracie even when Noah was not there. Oh, damn. <laughs> I enjoyed Gracie, and I wish Gracie was around when my kids mm. were younger, yeah. right? Because it's had more Dora representation. Explorer. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. We had Dora Explorer, although Dora Explorer, was she like... Is she- she Latino. 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 Yeah. yeah. So we was getting there, but Gracie is the bomb, okay? We had Fat Albert. That was a black No, cartoon. I'm talking about my, my, oh, um, kids. my kids. Yeah. <laughs> we had Gullah Gullah Island. We had. <laughs> <laughs> we had Fat Albert. <laughs> Kicking cans and, you know, all of that stuff, right? Well, we yeah. had to have a poor uh, cartoon. I mean, <laughs> we ain't seen nothing. <laughs> Rudy and uh, Fat Lip and the whole little crew. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. So. So yeah. I have a question for you, ladies. Okay. Really quick, so I know we getting short. Um, you remember how I was just saying that how like men we're taught like dumb stuff by other older uncles or older brothers or older cousins. Mm-hmm. Like what dumb stuff that you realize as an adult now that you were taught growing up? It's like that was so stupid. Why did I buy into that? Is there anything mm-hmm. that women ta- other women taught you, aunts, That's a good cousins, question. like anything you that, now you be like that was so dumb. I don't think it was anything that they taught me that I wish they didn't. I. It's some things that I wish I would have listened mm. to okay. when they said it. Um, it's a lot of stuff growing up that they they kind of warned me about. Um, and now I see myself warning my little cousins and warning my daughter. Like, right. I wish mm-hmm. I would have, I'm telling you, I wish I would have just listened when I was your age. And I remember my grandma saying that to me, my aunt saying it to me. So it's a lot of stuff. It's a What's little... one thing you wish you would have listened <sighs> to? Mm. <laughs> when it comes to boys, just focus mm. on school. You know, mm-hmm. it'll, you got a lot of time for that. Like, yeah. Yeah. and even like, I don't know, like growing up, certain things you'll think it's the end of the world mm-hmm. and life goes on. Like yeah. you think life doesn't go on, life right. goes on. Mm-hmm. Right. And I say that, especially now, yes. like with the suicide rate so high with mm-hmm. these young kids, like 
just listen. Like, life goes on. Things are not as deep as they seem. Mm-hmm. Right. And I wish I would have listened to that growing up. It would have saved me a lot of stress, a lot of tears, a lot of embarrassment. Because life goes on, it doesn't even matter. Like, the yeah. statute of limitation probably was, like, five five days. Mm-hmm. And then life went on. Mm-hmm. So, I wish yeah. I would listen to that. Yeah. Fun to tell. Uh, <laughs> um, I would definitely still what Iman said as well. Um just to kind of focus on school. Yeah. Definitely, I wish I would have listened to that more. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a lot of things that I, I went through that probably didn't have to go through had I listened. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as things that, like, I wish my mom or... Because, again, my parents are, or my family's from Haiti. And uh, so the culture is a little... different. Yeah, it's a, little, it's a, little, it's a little, whole lot of it different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Hmm. Can't think of one. Watch one come up in my head as me in the show. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come back to me on that one. All right. What about you, Shay? Um, I think one of the things that I wish I would have done is I wish I would have actually dated mm. and not felt like um I had to get married. That because we're we're again, yes. and I, I've said this before, we're raised at an early age to be wives and mothers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As soon as they put a Barbie doll in our in our um hand, mm-hmm. we're already nurturing that Barbie doll. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. or whatever, right? So mm-hmm. where the, the you know the the guys now well not today, because down there's a lot of stuff different today. <laughs> but boys growing up, y'all had y'all did WrestleMania, y'all had the yeah. trucks and stuff. Mm-hmm. It wasn't pressure of being fathers and being husbands, mm-hmm. but right. at a very early age girls were already being groomed to be moms and wives, mm-hmm. right? Good. So the expectation is you go to high school, you finish high school, you go to college, you finish college, and then you find a Prince Charming, you get married, you have a baby, you buy a mm-hmm. house, you have... But my thing is, well, we went to college, so what I'm supposed to do with the college degree? So mm-hmm. I'm not supposed to use that mm-hmm. college degree? Now mm-hmm. I gotta find Prince Charming, get married, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So although those those that particular... Um, scenario was not spoken yeah. by my family, but society, mm-hmm. it, that's what society expectation mm-hmm. was yeah. or is, right? Mm. So for me, I feel like I didn't have the opportunity to really date before I got married. Yeah. I should have dated. You missed your whole face. I should have been in the streets, <laughs> yeah. okay? Having a good you time. You missed your whole face. Figuring myself <laughs> out, mm. stuff like that. Travel. Whatever, man. Traveling. <laughs> So I didn't have my ki- I didn't have my children until my thirties anyway. So I Smart. waited to have kids, which I'm glad I did. Mm-hmm. But I was I got married at an early age, yeah. and you know, so I didn't get a chance to really date. And I think during that time, mm-hmm. I still was trying to figure out who I was. Yeah, yeah. right. So um, that would be that's definitely something that I think I would have done differently. I mm. I would have dated. I would have dated myself because, uh, of course, you guys know I'm, I'm I am divorced now, mm-hmm. but I had that opportunity to date for six years, Ooh, and boy, child. did I have fun! <laughs> I had a good what old a time. time. You had. I had a good old time, and yeah. I did, and I enjoyed every moment of it. Right? You had it later in life. I had it later in life, Come and on. I had a great time. Mm. I ain't even going live about that. So. Yeah, um, and I learned a lot about myself, but yeah. it also, that's when I rediscovered who I was. Mm. Yeah. That's when I rediscovered how dope I was, Come right? On. Because I think at an earlier age, there were self-esteem issues. Mm-hmm. People didn't know. Like, people say, I didn't know you had low self-esteem. Absolutely. I went through all of that, mm-hmm. right? But now, like, going through that phase of dating myself <laughs> yeah. and, and learning about myself and, and just, you know, being around some dope Women, Mm -hmm. that's the other thing I want to bring up. Mm. I want to bring that up. Ladies, we got to stop saying that we don't fool with other women. I get it. I understand. A lot of us have had females in our lives that have done us dirty. But I'm telling you, there are, I have so many dope females in my life, in my inner circle that. I mean, they're just amazing. You know what I'm saying? So to be in this phase of my life and have a sisterhood, they're not you, y'all. Not, and two of you, two of them are sitting here at the table. They're not my blood sisters, but it's 
it, it's just I, I I can't even explain, right? Mm-hmm. Um, two sitting at the table. Two is my producer, my assistant. I have dope women in my life. Yeah. And this time in, at the age that I am, it's it's amazing that we can celebrate and empower each other mm-hmm. and lift mm-hmm. each other up. Sitting to my left, Iman has Iman has. She has so much knowledge and and how to start a business and how to. She did my website, y'all, and she sat with me and she <laughs> she just worked with me. And I'm going to give you that because Thank I appreciate you. that you didn't mm-hmm. have to do that. Oh, you. you know what I'm saying? But that's how dope you are. You know what I'm saying? And Jen, same thing. My little sis, I call her my mini me, <laughs> right? I mean, it's it's just like she shows up whatever whatever it is that we need, and we are aged years apart. <laughs> But it don't feel that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the power of sisterhood is so dope and it's so important. So we got to stop saying, I don't deal with women. I don't fool with women. Because y'all missing out on a lot of good yeah. women. So true. Heal that stuff. Whatever mm. it is that you need to heal, heal it. Because mm-hmm. there's some dope females out here. And maybe you're attracting the wrong women. And so mm-hmm. instead of assessing everybody else, assess yourself first. Mm. And see what is it about mm. you yeah. that's attracting these type of people in your life that's you know causing that's this type talk. of friction. That part. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I can go on and on about the sisterhood that I have. Um, you know, and I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, Jen, my my assistant, yo, know, I've been sick for the last three weeks, and all she kept doing was saying, Would you lay your butt down? Aww. I got this. <laughs> we got this. We yeah. got the rebirth live coming Aww. up. And, you know, it's a lot of work. And mm. all she kept saying, I got this. You'll be, just rest, da, da, da. So I appreciate all of that, you yes. know. Um, I appreciate Tasha. I appreciate, you know, her showing up every Monday, making sure that the show was going good and all of that, you know. Mm-hmm. Michelle Washington, she's been doing the marketing for the Rebirth Live and been doing an amazing job and making sure everything is coming out timely. So I just have some dope women in my life, right? Mm-hmm. But I also have a dope brother over Come here. Come on. <laughs> I ain't gonna leave you out. <laughs> I got a dope brother over here that you know he. Whenever I need him to be there, he's there. Mm-hmm. He's just like, just tell me what to do, you yeah. know. If you hit me that so, hard again, I'ma die. Uh, <laughs> that was out of pain, not showing off. <laughs> just the left side, yeah. <laughs> uh, mm, yeah, man. So it's. I, I'm just so. Um, I, I just love. I love our 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 vibe right now yeah. as black people. Yeah. I, I think we are just, we are dope. Yeah. I'm using this word so much, but we are dope, yo. I love being black. I love my brothers. I love my sisters. Yeah. And yeah, I'm going to just be quiet. I'll let y'all finish it up. <laughs> I'll let y'all wrap up the show. It kind of reminds me a little bit of what was kind of talked about on the, the show about just not only just, um, you know, some of these uh, black perform black women performers, right? The mm-hmm. pioneers, but also supporting each other in the business as well. Because I mean, the entertainment business can be a very cutthroat industry. It is a cutthroat yeah. industry, right? And so when we kind of talk about women supporting women, right? And like, I guess the question that I have is, what do you feel like, and what do you feel like are some challenges for? challenges to women supporting women like why don't we do it enough we know the benefits of it right like you know helping to create opportunities it may help to kind of create meaningful friendships but why don't we do it competition Mm -hmm. Mm. i think it's competition i Mm -hmm. I think that um that it's it's competition we have always been in competition with each other Mm -hmm. okay rather it it, and uh, (laughs) dark skin versus light skin Natural hair versus relaxed, uh, relaxed hair. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Skinny versus thick girls. Booties versus non booties. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, we've always been in competition, mm-hmm. and we haven't. We wasn't the ones that put ourselves there. It's it's again. It was outside of us. Those outside forces. You know, for yeah. whatever reason, rather it was it was men, mm-hmm. rather it was um, other races, we were always in competition with each other. And the one thing that um, that also came up in this documentary, and I want you to answer her question as well, what came up in this documentary was we were always we always had the 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 you know the melon, right? Mm. We always had the nice lips. 
the booty and all of that, right? Where we were told that was too much. That wasn't beautiful. That wasn't pretty. Now, everybody is now mm-hmm. getting BBLs. Now, everybody's trying to get our lips. Yeah. Everybody's trying to get teen. Putting their life You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We Forward. are dope. We yeah. are dope. Think about how many people outside of our race that are trying to look like us, that are trying to have our curves, that are mm-hmm. trying to have or do the things that we do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we got to work on this competition that we have within ourselves. It's enough room for everybody. Mm-hmm. I don't care if we are the same. And man, she's she's a, a speaker. She does, you know, motivation and stuff. I do the same thing. But mm-hmm. guess what? There's room for both of us because mm-hmm. what she do is different. What I do is different. Mm-hmm. It's unique to us because yeah. we are individuals. Yeah. You know, you're a therapist. I'm a therapist. Mm-hmm. There's no need to be competing against <clears throat> each other. You know? So I feel the biggest thing is competition. What do you think? The same thing. The biggest thing mm-hmm. is competition. It's like a mm-hmm. race to the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what people don't understand is, like, if you see something in a woman that you like or that you admire and that you want for yourself, bless what you want. Yeah. Mm. Put yourself in that, you know, put yourself around that person. Learn from that person. Um you know, encourage them and motivate them because then you start to attract that stuff. Mm-hmm. But if I see something mm-hmm. in you that I like and I love and I want it for myself mm-hmm. and I'm throwing hate and envy, there's no way that's mm-hmm. coming my way. Right. Mm-hmm. If anything, right. I'm going to be repelling that thing that I want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you want to pray for the things that you want when you see in other people. You have to bless that in other people mm-hmm. and push other people to have it. And like I said, push yourself in the rooms with those people. Don't look at them as like, oh, they're competition. Mm-hmm. Um, them... It's two different lanes. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, keep your eye on your paper. Like, yeah. it's, it's keep your eye <laughs> yeah. on your paper. Like, it's That's two different tough. lanes. Like, mm-hmm. you making what you making is not taking anything from me. Come on. Mm-hmm. The more money you make does not make me make less. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, the, the higher you go does right. not push me down lower. You're not stepping on me to get to where you are because we're not even in the same lane. Mm-hmm. Right. It's mm-hmm. like you're in your own lane. And when people yeah. start to realize that, like, you'll be surprised how many um, opportunities you get and connections mm-hmm. and network, mm-hmm. like, networking opportunities you make. When you just can put your envy or your hate mm-hmm. or that need to compete, you just put that to the side and just just sit there and learn from other women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you are, it's always something you can learn from someone else. You don't know everything. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's, I think that's just the main concern. People think that you have to step on them to get ahead. And it's like, I don't have to step on you to get ahead. Like, you're not even... Yeah. Not even like we're not, we're not the same rate. Yeah, we're stronger like, together. We're not even that close. It's yeah. not even mm-hmm. clumped up like that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like as far as like money goes, not the money is printed and it's out there for anybody to get. And mm-hmm. if you so focused on me and worry about what I'm doing, and I go through this all the time, especially with like with Manifest Club. Like mm-hmm. if you would see like some of the nasty comments I mm-hmm. get, or people will say, Oh, I'm scamming, or like wow. just all types of stuff. Yeah. People who don't even know me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's strange to me. And I'm just it's like sad. That, that I, is really it's sad. sad. It's like I'm yeah. not even going to entertain it because a lot of times people just want that attention mm-hmm. so it can boost, I don't know, their likes or boost yeah. their followings. Mm-hmm. But it's like you don't have to put me down in order to push yourself up. Yeah. It doesn't have to work that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the way a lot of women move. And Absolutely. Once you get past that yeah. and understand, like, if you see something in another woman you love, you better go put yourself around yeah. that woman. Come on. So you can learn from her. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You're doing yourself a disservice. We are stronger mm. together. We Much are stronger, stronger together. together. What do you think? And I, we, we're about to wrap up, guys. What do you think, Um, you know, as a man looking, you know, into the... the <laughs> I see women. I and, and you can see the divide immediately. You put you put five women in a room and another woman walks in. Mm-hmm. It's first thing those other five women are doing. They look at them. Like, yeah. They see the women before the man see them. They're her <laughs> from head to toe, yeah. from mm-hmm. my hair to her shoes. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that's about, but I think I, the one thing y'all do need to take from us mm-hmm. is that men aren't in competition in that way. If, mm-hmm. a, if a handsome dude walks into the room, that doesn't that doesn't sway me. I'm Because I feel like whatever's going to happen here, if I want this room to be mine, I'm going to take it. Mm-hmm. I don't need to hate on him or to... Mm-hmm. And, and then again, men fall out over two things. Let's either money or women. Mm-hmm. So if none of those things are involved, men pretty much going to get along. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So women, it's just so many different little <laughs> small <laughs> intricacies that could make a relationship go south. Yeah. You know what I mean? Men, we pretty much... Like I say this all the time. I could sit at a bar and another dude I don't know could sit right beside me and we're watching a game. We'll start talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know this dude from a can of paint, but we'll start talking about that game. Mm-hmm. Do women do that? No, no, not not a, not a lot, not a lot. I mean, very seldom. Like today, I was pumping gas on my way here, mm-hmm. and I was getting in the car, and this lady said, "Excuse me, excuse me, 
And I turned around and she said, I love your dress. I love your dress. And oh, and I love your locks. And I said, oh, thank you. I appreciate that, right? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, some people just stare. They won't say anything. They'll just yeah. stare, you know? But I don't have a problem giving another woman a compliment. Yeah. You know, like, I don't have a problem doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, what is that taking from me to right. do that, right? And I, I agree. I don't think men are, are the same when it comes down to that. Now, I have met some men. I that mean, can be a little petty too. There's some petty men out but here. But <laughs> for the most part, I do feel that you know we struggle more yeah. with connection with other women than we do. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've seen women. You know, will stand right next to each other and won't even say anything. And won't even speak. It's crazy. They just look. And I'm like, so black women don't do the universal. This is a universal man Negro. The head nod. I don't <laughs> right. even know you, but you can go Right, about. right. No. Y'all don't do that? No. No. <laughs> Complete stranger. It's, it's, it's <laughs> not. We'll, you'll just have, you're there stare. You're, they'll just stare. It's like you and read I the hope. energy yeah. as soon as you walk in the door. Yeah. That's crazy. You can read the energy. <laughs> and the other thing to that is, mm -hmm. when I was working with adolescent um, females, um, the younger the younger group, I would always get, well, why, why'd you get into a fight? Well, because she was staring at me. Okay, well, what if she yeah, was staring crazy. at you thinking that you were pretty? Right. Well, maybe she liked what you had on that day. Right. Why did it have to be a problem? What well, was just the way she was looking? So that's, that's, that's you know. That's all learned behavior. That was that's interesting. That's all learned behavior. I'm sorry. I believe right. that. Right, yeah. Because I work with three to five-year-olds, and they already be having beef. I'm like, you four. <laughs> you don't even know your name. Exactly. What are you even looking at me, Mr. A? I'm like, you don't sit your ass down somewhere and exactly. looking at you, looking at what? You don't exactly. even know your last name. Yeah. <laughs> we we, we definitely... It's learned behavior. I'm, I'm yeah. telling you, this is learned behavior. Yeah. We I have promise to do better. I'm learning. Yeah. Yes. And I need to yeah. it. From their petty mamas and their petty grandmamas. <laughs> yeah. It's learned behavior. Yeah, And exactly. I think that re-emphasizes the need, you know, the desire for women to support women, right? Because mm -hmm. you are also... Not only, you know, having healthy relationships, creating, you know, opportunities for yourself to mm -hmm. grow, right? But you are also modeling to the people behind you right. mm -hmm. what it looks like to have healthy relationships right. with other women. Right. You know? yeah. Absolutely. We got to do better. We got to do better. Man, this was a, a great conversation, as as always. Um uh, Jay Marshall said, Montgomery, stand up. Shout <laughs> out to the gump. Shout out to Montgomery. They That's done made right. the folding chair. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, Priscilla, I got to send a shout out to Priscilla. Um, thank you, love, for reaching out to me, your wife, your amazing wife. Mm. She reached out to me, uh, what's the day, Monday? I think it was Saturday. I believe it was Saturday. Um, what she want? She, <laughs> you know what? Go ahead, she go reached ahead. out to check on me to see how I was feeling and to oh, see okay. if there was anything that I needed. And meanwhile, I really, I'm in a wheelchair. I meanwhile, mean, she, no, I know playing, she I'm was playing. taking care I, of you I real good. good. I, good. I just, good. I know she was taking care of you really good. You worried about somebody else? I'm over there like this. I, <laughs> doing I appreciate that. I really do. And again, again, I, I have to point this out because of the conversation. Mm -hmm. That is sisterhood. Mm -hmm. I work yeah. very closely with her husband. She trusts me with this man. Okay, so that is sisterhood. So I appreciate that because at the end of the day, you can go home and she can give you all kind of crap, right? And you won't be here, right? So I'm the man of my with, house. with that being said, <laughs> you know, I, I appreciate that, Priscilla. Thank you so much. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for checking on me. I appreciate appreciate that so much. I really do. Shout out to uh, Tanara. I see you. Shout out to Safranci again. I see you. I hope you guys tune in. Um, or actually come out on October 13th to the Rebirth Live. Yes. Um, we're going to wrap up. Jen Fontel, thank you so much. Oh, Iman, yes, thank, thank you, ladies. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank Tasha, you. Tasha, Jim Marshall, thank yes. you. I love you guys. Eli, you know what it is. Thank you for it. I'm sure. so happy you're My back, dog. man. We back, baby. So, guys, make sure you tune in next Monday. Um, actually... I got some cooking. Don't worry about it. You got something cooking. I will be out next Monday, guys. It is my son's birthday mm. and i'm going to Which spend one? that time my youngest is okay. bryson's birthday and it is also my fiance's birthday however he will be working oh, but damn. i'm going to spend that time with my son mm. monday night and um how old is he i will see you guys the following monday he will be turning 17 wow yes the baby? and then i will also be preparing to drop off my oldest xavier to 
Dell State University for his first year of college. Shout out to all the uh, freshmen that's going in. Shout out to DSU Hornets. Let's go. All right, guys. Um, we're going to end the show. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Thank you for chiming in with your comments. We love you. RebirthU.com. Get your ticket. Tasha, take us out. Rebirth Podcast is coming from behind the mic to a live audience. We're bringing conversation and entertainment together. Make sure you mark your calendar for October 13th. The event is happening right here at Theater Inn in Wilmington, Delaware. This event is for men and women, so we cannot wait for you to be a part of this.